going, guys? It's been a while. So, I didn't watch the debates last night, the so-called Republican debates, but I was told, I was told that the issue of, uh, came up during the debates. Um, in particular, I think Governor DeSantis made a few comments about, uh, shooting people and all this kind of thing and whatever uh, okay and it's interesting guys because I I don't know about you I had I, I hear a lot of talk about the border you know I hear a lot a lot of politicians talking about the border crisis I think I hear a lot of news outlets talking about the border crisis, but what I don't see is actual visual footage, like journalism reporting from the border. We see, you know, clips here and there of, of people being uh, looked at by border patrol, you know, people that have already come into America and all this kind of stuff. But we don't actually know how they got there. We don't actually know how they got into America. We don't actually know the can know or see the kind of uh, you know, as we say in Russian, обстановка, the the setup. We don't see the infrastructure of what it is actually that is allowing them to get into the country. Now you guys may be saying, well, what do you, let's be like, you know, why do you have a problem with these people? Most of these people are very nice people. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's cut the crap, okay? Some of you guys probably saw the movie Sound of Freedom. I just want to let you know that what's happening right now at the border, right? Uh, there are kids, little children that are being brought in by people who are not their parents, these little children are drugged up with something called Rohypnol. You guys want to know what Rohypnol is? It is the date rape drug. So, so imagine giving, it's one thing to give, you know, I'm not saying it's good, <laughs> to give an adult, like a lady, this drug, they fall asleep, they don't remember what happened to them. You give it to a child, they have not a clue, they'll be out like a light for hours and hours and hours, if not days. They won't be able to alert, you know, the authorities in front of them, hey, this is not my your papa or your mama, right? And I'm not going to say, I can't even verbalize what happens to these children. I can just tell you that I was shown a list of the people, of the addresses who take these children in, and I can assure you it's, assure you it's not people who want to adopt these children, or at least most of those people are not there to be adopting them, okay? With that said, guys, with that said, I'm not even mentioning the drug cartels and all this other stuff, okay? With that said, guys, um, there, prior to this past week, there were a total of two people, two, one, two, on planet Earth, actually going physically and covering what is happening on the so-called non-existent border of America and Mexico. Their names are Michael Jan and Ann Vandersteel. Michael Jan is a, or was a war correspondent for many years. I think I heard first heard of him uh, from, you know, during Iraq, during the second Iraq war. I think he was in Afghanistan, I'm not sure, but he's been all over the world, all over the world, every single, anything, theater of operations you can think of, he's been there. And then, and Van der Steel, who has an amazing channel, she's part of the Zlenko Foundation, uh, fantastic independent journalist. So they've been down on the border showing people, primarily on Twitter, primarily on Rumble, what is actually going on. So, folks, at some point, um, you know, my friend Frank Zelenko started interacting with Michael, as well as Anne, and Michael basically said, hey, come join us. 
So Frank didn't want to go by himself. He messages me or calls me. He's like, dude, you want to go on a road trip? I said, I don't know about that. I don't know if I have, you know, the money or the car for this or, you know, the strength of this or the time for this. And then eventually he convinced me and I was like, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, and I said, you don't want to fly there? He's like, no, I don't fly. I flew to, I flew to Miami. We got in the car. And we drove all along the Gulf of Mexico. It took us about three or four days. And, um, you know, first we stopped, you know, we have, I ended up in Texas. We stopped at a couple of places. We met our friends, Michael and Ann. And then we headed over to a place called Boca Chica, Texas. Before you get to Boca Chica, ladies and gentlemen, before we got there, we went we got there basically Arab Shabbat, right? Friday afternoon. We didn't have any time to spare. We checked into our hotel. Our hotel was in a place called South Padre Island. I don't know if you guys remember, MTV had, uh, you know, they used to have their, uh, you know, their dancing, little dancing shows with a lady by the name of Daisy Fuentes, right? They had all these bands. And it was spring break in South Padre Island. South Padre Island was a very skinny island all the way on the southern tip of Texas, right? They even have an international airport there. So we got a hotel there, and we spent Shabbat there. Ladies and gentlemen, I will just tell you, our hotel, with the exception of the people working the front desk, no one, not one of the guests, spoke English. We pretty much concluded, we figured out that this is a hotel that was built recently, I'm not going to say the name of it, two or three years ago, to house people that are coming in from Mexico. Some of those people were, in fact, very nice families, but some of those people were, uh, you know, a little bit shady characters. We did not investigate exactly who they were and what they were here to do, what their goals, what their plans were. So after staying in South Padre Island, the very next day, Sunday, this past Sunday, Frank and I got in the car. We headed over to a place called Boca Chica, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, what is in Boca Chica? There's two things. Uh, one is SpaceX, one of Elon's launch pads and rocket housing facilities. He's got actually two areas there. One is where the rockets are. The other one is where the launch pad is. All the way by the beach, ladies and gentlemen. And then... So you have that, you have SpaceX. Then you go on the beach, you take your you take your vehicle. Ours was not a 4x4, so we, you know, we had some fun there. <laughs> and you drive about a couple of miles along the Gulf, along the beach, and you get to a point where the Gulf of Mexico meets the end of the Rio Grande. That is Mexico, ladies and gentlemen. What do you have there? You have a bunch of people with fishing poles, Mexican people. Uh, I guess they're fishing or they're pretending like they're fishing. But who are they really, ladies and gentlemen? They are people who are spotters. They are helping the drug smoke cartels. They're helping the people bringing in little kids and all the rest of it. Now you may be asking yourself, where is Border Patrol? There is a Border Patrol SUV there. Uh, there's a guy sitting inside, one officer, and I think when we looked at him, he was kind of looked like he was sleeping. So we go, we could only conclude that his salary, the majority of his salary, the majority of what he takes home, does not come from the U.S. government. It comes from other places. Now you guys are asking the question: Let's see, where are these people coming from? Where where are these so-called fishermen coming from? Or who who are the people that they're spotting for? Ladies and gentlemen. As we speak for the past, I mean, it's been years already, but it's still happening. There are people from about 130 or 140 countries. They find a way to get into uh, South America, places like Colombia, Venezuela, other places. Then they found they find a way how to get from South America into, into Central America, and they start walking on this road it's, it's not even a road that's made for cars. It's just a gap, right? It's, it's something, it used to be a jungle road. 
and it, and it became a gap. It's been tread on so much over the years that it's turned into a, what's called a gap. It's called a Darien Gap. And you could pretty much walk, if you were so inclined, on the Darien Gap through the entirety of Central America. Panama, Guatemala, and eventually Mexico, Costa Rica, eventually Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, and the people that are coming over by the Darien Gap, they're coming over and then they're eventually reaching Mexico, and then they're going through this area. They're bringing all sorts of uh, diseases that have been, have not been in America in decades, my friends. Now you might be saying, "Sweet, come on! Like, isn't what they did, what they, what was done about a hundred years ago? You know, you blame the immigrants for bringing diseases." But, ladies and gentlemen, do, do you remember the movie Godfather when when uh, the child Corleone, as a child, was on a boat by himself? And when he arrived on Ellis Island, what did they make him do? Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who seen, haven't seen the movie, or if you remember the movie, they made him sit in quarantine for three months because they discovered that he has some sort of disease that he brought over from Italy, and they didn't want people to bring it into the country. And after he was done sitting in quarantine, and he didn't have this issue anymore, he was allowed to be, he was sent into the general population. He went to, you know, I guess Brooklyn or wherever he went, okay? My friends, this, these were realities. These are still realities today. My friends, so Frank and I were just on this border, or this, we don't have a border. We do not have, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to repeat this again. We don't, America doesn't have a border. It is not a country. How do we know that? Because there was no border. There's like a little part of the Rio Grande, which is that you could, you could pretty much wade there, W-A-D-E. You can stand there, and it's about yay high. And you can stand there up to your like ankles and just walk. Take off your shoes and walk. And you're in America, right? Guys, do you know where Border Patrol was standing? Once, once you get about um, uh, two miles or three miles into, like, uh, you know, you drive towards Brownsville, there's a checkpoint there. And what do they do? There's a bunch of Spanish-speaking U.S. Border Patrol people. Of course, you know, we understand why. They ask you to roll down the window. And they ask you, in our case, we had Florida plates, and they ask you, are you American citizens? We said yes. And they, they let you go on your merry way. So now, guys, think about this. You have some people, as was shown to, to us by our friend Michael Yan, that are coming over. Uh, a few Chinese gentlemen who speak perfect English, like with better accents than I have. About the same, really. The Chinese gentlemen coming over from Mexico. They're not here to pick pick uh, lettuce, I can tell you that. They're not here to deliver your food. They're not here to clean your hotels. They're not here they're not here for any of that. They speak perfect English. And they're from China, my friends. What are they here what are they here for? Think about it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna answer the question. I'm just gonna I'm gonna let you, you know, sit in silence and think about it. And consider all the possibilities why they why they person like that is here. Now you imagine this person gets in a car and they say, are you an American citizen? He's like, yeah. Just like let him through. You know, somebody somebody gives him a car. Ladies and gentlemen, and again, this is all happening right next to one of the most prominent uh, you know, space expo- exploration launch pads in the world. Now the question you're asking does Elon Musk know this is happening? I'm sure he does. You know, here's a guy that bought uh, Twitter and is now claiming to be, you know, the champion of free speech, claiming to be, uh, I don't know, this wonderful journalist or a person who enables people who want to do journalism, independent journalism. Ladies and gentlemen, this is happening right next to his um, one of his sites. This is happening right next to it. Literally, here's a launch pad, and here are people coming over from all kinds of countries, all different countries, with all kinds of diseases. And some of them are not, many of them are not here to work. Some of them are not here to work. We don't know what they're here for. Some of them make their way to different cities in Texas. Other people make their way to California. Other people make their way to New York. There's some in the Roosevelt Hotel here and other hotels, ladies and gentlemen. Now they're thinking about uh, not having them stay in hotels, but having them stay, you know, they're giving people 
like people like you and me, housing vouchers, they're basically paying us to have these people stay in their house. Not their, not, not their house, not Eric Adams' house, your and mine house. I mean, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to let them if we don't want, if we don't want to, but they're, they're paying us. They're trying, to, they're trying to entice people to have these people stay at their house. Ladies and gentlemen, so my father came up to me today and he asked me, how come your footage, or any footage really, wasn't mentioned at these debates? And I said, that's precisely the point of why we actually went to this place, because they're not, not none of these people are, are going to mention any of this. They know what's going on. President Trump knows what's going on. He mentioned some of it. You know, he appeared with the guy, Ballard, and with, uh, you know, what's his name? Kaviz Azizil, as I like to call him. And he talked about the movie, Sound of Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sound of Freedom stuff is still going on. It's still going on. And it's not just people, you know, like, you, I don't know if you guys saw the movie, uh, somebody enticing a girl to come to a modeling shoot and, uh, you know, wherever this was. In a Central American country, we're talking about giving little children no hypnol, and it's not even that they're brought over in containers. They're being carried by people who, you know, can pass for somebody who looks like their parents. And they're like sleeping. You know, my kid is sleeping. Don't, don't, don't touch him. Guys, you think you, Border Patrol doesn't know what's going on? You think everybody's not in on it? You think nobody gets paid? Ladies and gentlemen, this is so much deeper than you know. Again, we were shown Excel spreadsheets of the people that take these kids of the houses that these kids end up in. Again, these are not adoption ado adoption agencies or adopters of foster homes. Now you have also ca so-called Catholic charities working with this whole thing. You have children in Walmarts and empty, empty Walmarts and warehouses, ladies and gentlemen. You have entire colonies, what's called colonias, a place called Colony Ridge in Houston. That's a different story. My friends, we were there. My friend Frank and I were there. We were... We were, as I like to call, you know, Dr. Seuss parlance, thing one, uh, thing three and thing four, okay? Michael Jan and Ann Vandersteel are one and two. Frank and I are three and four. And we have the footage to prove it. Ladies and gentlemen, America is being systematically invaded. Systematically. Um, this is deliberate. This is being deliberately done by uh, the Biden administration. I can't even call it the Biden administration. I think it's either the Obama administration or the Soros administration. There are people paying for this. There are people orchestrating this. This is so organized and so coordinated. You haven't the faintest idea. You haven't the faintest idea. The only thing that I will say, ladies and gentlemen, is that, uh, you know, in terms of the diseases that are come, that are being brought over, and I'm not going to mention it here because this is going to go later on YouTube and there's certain things I can't mention, but let's just put it this way. Dr. Zelenko's protocol. For most. For most of them. Okay? Dr. Z's protocol for most of them, majority of them. There's maybe one or two that, you know, you got to go do other things, but for most of them, you know. You know what. Okay? So, my friends... I, I know you know this. I know you knew this, but I, I'm, I'm here to tell you that, you know, to I'm here to confirm it for you. And again, Fox News doesn't cover it. CNN for sure don't cover it because they're not in on it. MSNBC don't cover it, obviously, uh, because they benefit, benefit from it. Uh, even Newsmax, all these other outlets don't cover it. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in an era where if you want to know something, like, if you want to know the truth, if you, you want to know what's really going on in, you know, any place in the world, you have to physically go there. You have to get, yes, you have to get on a plane or you have to go get in a car, fly, drive, train, planes, trains, automobiles. You have to go there and see it for yourself. My friend Frank and I saw it for ourselves. And what we saw is the fact that we don't have a country, ladies and gentlemen. We literally, you guys may be saying, Tzvi, you're being extreme. You're being, you know, you're exaggerating. You're being, you're being uh, dramatic. Don't be so dramatic. Don't be so dramatic. Come on. Like, just seriously, Tzvi, you're an extremist. 
you're an extremist. You're you're a conspiracy theorist, extremist. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a country. We do not. My uncle used to work at the Roosevelt Roosevelt Hotel when it, before it was closed down during COVID. Now they just reopened it. It's 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 a place. It's used to house these people. And they invited him back to work. They're like, he's a to work as what? A made her D for, uh, you know, Julio Jalelo Jalelo is, uh, what's his name used to say? Jackie Mason, the late great. I'll take my pension, thank you. <laughs> so, my friends, I'm about to lose reception here, but if you don't have a border, you don't have a country. It's very simple. And, um, Elon Musk knows, Fox News know, all the people that you saw in the debates yesterday know, Trump knows also, but Trump was trying to do something about it, that's why you see, they want him in jail, meaning they, they, the people that want this to keep on, you know, happening, that want this to continue going on, they want the person that's fighting it, that was fighting it when he was the president, they want him gone. All these other people, they're talking about this and that, and uh, immigration, immigration. I will shoot them, I will this, I will that. Ladies and gentlemen, you know that if you build a wall, you don't, you don't need to shoot anybody, <laughs> okay? You build a wall, like, going from under the ground, you know, so you can't tunnel under, very high, and all across, you ain't gotta shoot nobody. Okay, ain't nobody getting in. <laughs> Even at the very southern tip where the Rio Grande meets the Gulf of Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, astounding. That's where your tax dollars go, by the way, for people, you know, there's for these guys to sit on the beach and just, uh, you know, in, a, in, a, in an SUV and just let things happen. And and to, to you know, support it and to escort it and to, like, uh, enable it, facilitate it, ladies and gentlemen, that's what your tax dollars are paying for. So, anyway, guys, Bezat Hashem, uh, you know, this is not going to be hidden forever. We're trying to get the word out. We are getting the word out. And uh, we go forward. We go forward, my friends. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Stay safe.